draws on apace, for happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes, she lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night, and four nights will quickly dream away the time. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love doing thee injuries, but I will wed thee in another key with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? <sighs> Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall either be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in this case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I may bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Thrice blessed they that master sow their blood, but earthlier happy is the rose distilled than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I roll my virgin patten up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy craze title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius, let me have Hermia, or do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, true, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, and, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, 
made love to Nedar's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate, to death or to a vow of single life. Come, Hippolyta, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business. With duty and desire we follow you. How now, my love? Why is your cheeks so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? We like for one to reign, which I could well beteem them from the tempest to my eyes. I mean, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. If then true lovers had ever been crossed, experience is an edict in destiny, then we must teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears. <gasps> Poor fancy followers. A good persuasion, therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues. There, gentle Hermia. May I marry thee? Steal forth from thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town. There, I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by keeping strong this bow, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in numbers more than women ever spoke. In that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God speak for Helena, whither away? Call you me fair? How fair again unsay? Demetrius loves you more fair. Oh, happy fair! Sickness is catching. Oh, were favor so yours would I catch, fair Hermia? Ere I go. Teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, would that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helena, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, tomorrow a time when lovers' flights doth still can steal through Athens' gates that we have devised to steal. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. For a while, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Lysander, keep word. We must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. And Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius don't on you. How happy some or other can be! Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all that he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. <coughs> Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled as waggish boys in games themselves forswear. So, the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, 
He hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail, some heat from Hermia fell. So he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me and I too, enrich my pain to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? You are best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here's the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play an our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on. Then, read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is. The most lamentable comedy, most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom, the Weaver. Ready? Name a part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears from the true performing of it. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus's car shall shine from far, and make and mar the foolish fates. <laughs> this was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? Ha! Ha! Take this vile beast! Ha! It is the uh, the lay, the lay. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. I, 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 I have a beard coming. That is all one, and you shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play this be too. I'll, I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney. No, no, you must play Pyramus, and you flute Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starling, the tailor. Robin Starling, the tailor. Here, uh, here, Peter Quince. Robin Starling, you must play Thisbe's mother. <laughs> Uh, Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here's a play fitted. Have, have you the lion's part written? <laughs> Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it. Extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. How roar that it'll do any man's heart good to hear me. And you should do it too terribly, that you would fright the duchess and the ladies, and they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. But I will aggravate my voice, so that I'll roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and twer any nightingale. Roar! You must play Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in the summer's day. A most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our device is known. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Adieu. 
How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through brush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire, I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. I must go seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou love of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all of our elves come here anon. The king doth keep his revel here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forests wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet by grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square, and all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite, called Robin Goodfellow, are not you he, that frights the maidens of the villagery. Those that hobgoblin call you in sweet puck, you do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakest to right, I am that merry wanderer of the night. But, room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress, would that he were gone. All met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Fairy skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash one, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India? But that, forsooth, the balancing Amazon, your beskinned mistress and warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How can thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing that I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on a hill in dale, forest, or med, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport, therefore the winds, piping to us in vain as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land have made have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. And through this distemperature, we see the seasons alter and the amazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same prodigy of evil comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. Mother was a voice of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood, when we have laughed to see the sails conceive, and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and with swimming gait, following her womb, then rich with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land, to fetch me trifles and return again, as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy, and for her sake, I will not part with him.
How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. <laughs> not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away, we shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way, thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou's remembrance once I sat upon a promontory to hear the sea maid's music? I remember. That very time I saw, but thou's could not. Cupid, all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vessel thrown by the west. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower. Fetch me that flower, that herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. I'll put a girdle around the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she's asleep, and I'll drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she waking looks upon, may it be on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull. She shall pursue it with the soul of love, and ere I take this charm off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible. And I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? That thou toldest me they were stolen unto this wood. Hence, get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not? Nor I cannot love you. And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel and Demetrius. The more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. I'll run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Or, if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I in the temple, the town, the field, you do me mischief! Fie, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love, as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph, ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Welcome, wanderer. Hast thou the flower there? Aye, here it is. I pray thee, give it to me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox slips and the nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled, in these flowers with dances and delight. And with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athene lady is in love and with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, and look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Come, now a roundel and a fairy song, then to your offices, and let me sleep. 
you spotted snakes with double tongues. Thorny hedgehogs be the seen. Newts and blind worms do no wrong. Come, Come not near our fairy queen. Seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take love and languish for his sake in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest, it is thy dear wake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I have forgot our way. Well, rest us if you think it good and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find your out a bag, for I upon this bank will rest my hang. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. Nay, <laughs> good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Now, I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Then, by your side, no bedroom me deny. For lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander is very pretty. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, fly further off than human modesty. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love near altar to thy sweet life end. Amen, amen, to that fair prayer say I. Then end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Here is my bed. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. With half the wish, the wish's eyes be pressed. Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force in stirring love, night and silence. Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all this power the charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid. Sleep its seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay! Though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. Stay on thy peril. I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, where so or she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel though Demetrius do, as a monster fly my presence thus. But who is here? Lysander? On the ground? Dead? Or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander! If you live, good sir, Awake! And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Oh, where is Demetrius? How fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What, though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. It's not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? 
Good troth, you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. But very well, perforce I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused? She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come, Lysander, near. And all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me. Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I am made for Peggy, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how it quick with fear. Lysander? What, removed? Lysander, Lord! What, out of hearing? Gone, no sound, no word? No, then I'll perceive thee all not nigh, either death or you I'll find immediately. Are we all met? Pat, Pat, and here's a marvelous, convenient location for our rehearsal. Peter Quince. What sayest thou, bully bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? I like an harless beer. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And, for the better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them all out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? Hey, I fear it, I promise you. Therefore, another prologue must say that he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, ladies, or fair ladies. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there indeed, let him name his name, and tell them plainly he is snug to join her. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is to bring moonlight into the chamber. For as you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Why, then... May leave a casement of the great chamber window, where we play, open, and the moon may shine in the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with lanthorn and bush of thorn and say he comes to present or disfigure the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing, that is to bring a wall into the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story did speak th through a chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall and let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, when you've spoken your speech, enter into that break. Everyone, according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What, a play toward? I'll be an auditor. An actor, too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of Odia savor sweet. Odors. 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 Savor sweet. 
So hath thy breath, my dearest this be dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. <laughs> Stranger pyramids than are played here. Must I speak now? Ay, Mary, you must. For you must understand that he goes but to see a noise that he has heard, and is to come again. M most radiant pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and eke most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninny's tomb, man? Well, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your words at once. Jews and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is never tire. Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, Thisbe, if I were only thine. Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange, we are haunted! Pray, masters, fly, masters! Ah! <laughs> Sometimes a hound, a hog, a headless bear, sometimes a fire. And neigh, and bark, and grunt, and roar, and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Why do they run away? I see their knavery. This is to make an ass out of me, to frighten me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing. That they shall hear, I am not afraid. The owl so cock so black of you with orange tawny bill, the thrall so with his note so true, the wren with little quill. <sighs> what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain so cuckoo gray, whose note full many a man doth mark and dares not answer. Nay. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fairest virtues force per force doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, Reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. But if I have wit enough to stay out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and I will purge thy mortal grossness so, that thou shall like an airy spirit go. Peas, blossom, cobweb, moth and mustard seed. Ready! And I! And I! And I! Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal! Hail! 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 I cry your worship's mercy. Heartily, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb! I shall desire you of Martin Queens. Go to Master Cobweb! If I cut my finger, I shall make both of you. <laughs> Your name, honest gentleman? Peace Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mr. Squash, your mother, and to Master Peace God, your father. <laughs> I shall desire you of more queens. Go to Master Peace Blossom. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard seed. Good master, mustard seed. I know your patience well. I shall desire you of more acquaintance.
good master mustard seed. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awaked, then what it was, then next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress, with a monster, is in love. Near to her, close in a consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals, who work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus's nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, and ass's knoll I fixed upon his head. <laughs> and on his thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy, like geese that the creeping fowler eye, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky. So, at his sight, away his fellows fly. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When, in this moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked, and straightway loved an ass! <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet lashed the Athenian's eye with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, when he waked of force, she must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. <sighs> oh, I rebuke you, him that loves you so. Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Oh, I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being or shooting blood, plunging the deep, and kill me too, for it cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced to the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What is this to my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog! Out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him, then? Henceforth never be numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, then, tell me that he is well. And if I could, <clears throat> what should I get there for? A privilege. Never to see me more, and from the hated presence part I so, see me no more whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, for death did bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. What hast thou done? Thou hast quite mistaken and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turn true. Then fatal rules. One man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath and oath. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens, look you find. By some illusion, thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink into the apple of his eye. With this love he do espy, let her shine as gloriously as the Venus sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for her remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena, 
is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for lover's fee, shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then, then two at once will woo one. And that must needs be sport alone. Why should you think that I should woo and scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. And vows so born in their nativity, all truth appears. You do advance your cunning more and more when truth kills truth. Oh, devilish holy fray! These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her ore? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her ore! Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is money. Oh, how ripe and show those lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. You both are rivals and love Hermia. And now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. Not a noble sort would so offend a virgin just for sport. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know, I know. And here, with all goodwill, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part, and to yours of Helen, to me bequeathed, whom I do love and will do till my death. <sighs> Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. Helen, it is not so. Look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by my eye. Lysander found my ear. I thank it, brought me to thy sound. But why in kindly didst thou leave me so? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know that the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not, and you think it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy! Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport. In spite of me! Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid! Have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent when we have shed the hasty foot of time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious, celestial. Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me, forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand not what you mean by this. I do. Persever, counterfeit sad looks, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But very well, this is partly my own fault, which death or absence shall soon remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul. Fair Helena! Oh, excellent! Sweet, do not scorn her so. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. 
Why, Sander, where'd you tense all this? Hang off them, cat! A burr, vile thing, or I would let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What changes the sweet love? Thy love! Out, Tawny Tartar! Out! Out, loath medicine! Hated potion! Hence! Do you not jest? <laughs> yes, sooth, and so do you! Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I have your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I will not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you love me, yet since night you left me, why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid! In earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, be certain, tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love! What? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you! Puppet? Why so? A that way goes the game. Now, I do perceive that she hath made compare between our statues. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, she hath, forsooth, prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eye. Ah! I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower her again. Good Hermia. Do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia, did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. And now, so, you will let me quiet go. To Athens will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go! You see how simple and how fond I am. Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. And though she be but little, she's fierce. Little again? Nothing but low, little. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf, you bean, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try who's right, of thine or mine, is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. Wake, all this surgeon shall seem a dream and fruitless vision, while 
I, in this affair, do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. But, with not standing haste, make no delay, we may affect this business yet or day. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! Here, draw on red. Where, Where art thou? I will be with thee straight! Follow me then, to plainer ground. Ah! Lysander, speak again! Thou runaway, thou coward! Art thou fled? Speak! In some bush? Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookest for wars? Yeah! Art thou there? Follow, Follow us. us. We'll, we'll try, try not to man here. Ah! He comes before me and still dares me on. <coughs> When I come where he calls, then he is gone! Oh. <coughs> and then fallen am I, in a dark, uneven way. <gasps> and here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day! Ho, 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 ho. Why Why can't can't stop? Stop? Abide me, if thou darest, for well I want thou runnest before me. Shifting every place, and dare not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay then, thou mockest me. Thou shalt buy this year ever on thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, Look to be Ooh. visited. Oh, weary night. Oh, long and tedious night. Abate thy hour. Shine comforts from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight from these that my poor company detest. And sleep, that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from my own company. Yet but three, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so unwell, but dabble with dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. I think she'll glide center if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill, and all will be well. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head, and kiss thy fair, large ears, my gentle joy. Where's Peas Blossom? Ready! Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready! Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur. Get you your weapons in your hand and kill me, a red-hipped humblebee on the top of a thistle. And Good, Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Where 
Yes, Monsieur Mustard Seed. What's your will? Nothing good, Monsieur, but to help cavalry cobweb to scratch. I must the barbers, Monsieur, for methinks I am marvelous hairy about the face. Say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly, a peck of provender. I could munch on your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay, hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I had rather have a handful or two of dried peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me, for I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou the sweet sight? Her dotage I do begin to pity, for leaving her late behind the woods, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool. I did upbraid her and fall out with her, when I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience. But I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now that I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. Be as thou was wont to be, see as thou was wont to see. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. <sighs> my Oberon, what visions have I seen? He thought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> there lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence, a while. Robin, take off his head. Titania, music call and strike more dead than common sleep of these five descents. Music, ho. Music such as charmeth sleep. When thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes, peep. Sound, music, come, my queen, take hands with me and rock on the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are a new amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Theseus' house triumphantly and blessed to all fair prosperity. And there shall be the pair of faithful lovers be, wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. Fairy king, attend and mark, I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silence sad, trip away after the night shade. We, the globe, can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. We will, fair queen. Up to the mountain's top, to mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. Judge when you hear. But soft, what nymphs are these? My noble lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, and this Demetrius is. Oh, and this Helena, old Nader's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May. And hearing our intent, came here and grace our solemnity. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Good morrow, friends! St. Valentine is past. Begin these woodbirds, but a couple now.
P -p -par pardon my lord? I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half waking, but as yet, I swear, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of Athenian law- Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. Uh, m my lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, and I, in fury, hither followed them. Fair Helen, I, in <laughs> fancy, following me. Ah, uh, but, my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is my love to Hermia melted as the snow. Seems me now as the remembrance of an idle god, and all the faith, the, the virtue of mine heart, the object and pleasure of mine eyes, only Helena. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we more will hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three and three will hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Are, are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me now that, that, that yet we, we sleep, we, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and, and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him, and by the way, let us recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me, and I will answer. My next is most fair Pyramus. <laughs> Hi ho, I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was. A man is but an ass if he goes to expound this dream. Methought I was, there is no man that can tell what. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hands not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. <laughs> I'll get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. I will sing it in the latter end of the play, before the Duke. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. There's not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus, but he. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there is two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. Oh, sweet bully bottom. Thus hath he lost us six piece a day during his life. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Bottom, almost courageous day, almost happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders. But ask me not what. For if I tell you, I am no true Athenian. I will tell you everything, right as it fell out. Tell us, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Every man look o'er his part. For the short and the longest, our play is preferred. No more words. Away! Go away! Tis strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains. But 
all their stories of the night told over and all their minds transfigured so together. More witnesses than fancies images and grows of something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Here come the lovers full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. More than us to wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? What revels are at hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Ah, merry and tragical, tedious and brief, that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. And we will hear it. Go, uh, bring them in. And take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness o'ercharged. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. Let him approach. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This pu beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man of lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder and through walls chink. Poor souls are content to whisper. This man with lanthorn dog and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine. For, if you would know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus's tomb there. There to woo, this grisly beast, which lion hype by name, the trusty Thisbe coming first by night, did scare away, or rather, did affright. Let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord. One lion may, when many asses do. <laughs> And this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. And such a wall that I would have you think had in it a cranny hole or chink through which the lovers, Autumn and Fl Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. How grim looks night! Ho, oh, night with hue so black! Ho, oh, night, whichever art when day is not! Ho, oh, night! Ho, oh, night! Ho, oh, lack! Ho, oh, lack! Ho, oh, lack! I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot! Thou wall! Ho, oh, wall! Ho, oh, sweet and lovely wall! Show me thy cheek to blink through with mine eye! Thanks, courteous wall! To shield thee well for this. But what see I? No face me do I see. Oh, wicked wall through whom I see no bliss. Curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. Ah! Uh. Wall me thinks, being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy on her through the wall. You shall see, it will fall pat as I told you. Yonder she comes! Oh, 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 wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. I see a voice now lie to the chink, to spy and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe? My love thou art, my love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall! I kiss the walls whole, but not your lips at all. Wilt thou at me these two meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I, while my part discharged so, and being done thus, wit, 
swallow away dot go. This is the silly stuff I ever heard. Here come two noble beasts in. A man and a lion. You, ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion rough and wildest rage doth roar. Then know that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. For if I should, as lion come in strife into this place, twere pity on my life. <gasps> a very gentle beast. Have a good conscience. <laughs> the very best did a beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. <laughs> this lanthorn doth the horn moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> this lanthorn doth the horn moon present. Myself, the man I the moon do seem to be. <laughs> I'm wary of this moon. What do you would change? It appears by his small light of discretion that he is in the wane, but yet in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, Moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that the Lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, <laughs> my thorn bush, and this dog. My dog. Why, all these should be in the Landorn, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes Thisbe. This is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Roar! Ah! Well roared, lion. Well run, Thisbe. Well shown, moon. Truly the moon shines with a good grace. And then came Pyramus. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee for shining now so bright, for by thy gracious gold and glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest Thisbe's bite. But stay, ho oh, spite, put mark, poor knight. What dreadful doll is here? Hives, do you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle good, what? Stained with blood? Approach ye furies fell, quail crushed to glue to quell. Tis shrew my heart, but I pity the man. Come, tears come out. <laughs> out, sword and wounds. That left pap of fear must sigh, that left pap, where heart doth hop. Thus die I. Thus, 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 now am I dead, now am I fled, my soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose that light, moon, take that flight, now. With the help of a surgeon, you might yet recover and prove an ass. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak, quite dumb. Dead, dead, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. Lovers, make moan. His eyes were as green as leeks. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword, my blade, my breast imbue. And farewell, friends, thus this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. Aye, and Wall, too. 
No, I assure you, the wall is down, that parted their fathers. Will it please you to hear the epilogue or to see a burger mask dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. But come, your burger mask, let your epilogue alone. Lovers, to bed, tis almost fairy time. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. Now the hungry lion roars and the wolf behowls the moon. Whilst the heavy plowman snores all with weary task for done, and we fairies that do run by the triple hecate's team from the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream, now our frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Now, until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, with this field do concentrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless, through this palace, with sweet peace, and the owner of it blessed ever shall in safety rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by the break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this. And all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, whilst these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And, as I am an honest puck, if we shall have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So, Good night unto you all. Give me your hands, if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs> Thank you.